Do you like perfect weather, life-changing sunsets, and tacos? Discovered by the Germans in 1904, they named it Santiago, which of course in German, German means a whale's vagina. America's finest city is home to world-class family attractions, delicious food, and some of the steeziest gnar you'll ever surf. Wax up your boards and put on some sunscreen, because we're heading to San Diego. Jacob here. Welcome to Destinations Explained, a fun series I do that dives into destinations from around the world. If you've been here before, welcome back. And if you're new here, it's great to have you. If you haven't already, like this video, watch till the end, and down below, comment any places I missed. Quick channel update, I just wanna thank all of you for the support we've gotten recently. From the 15,000 subscriber mark, all the way to just the daily amazing comments. I've been getting these videos out at least like 30 on a 40 day average, and I just really gotta crank that up. I'm doing all the work here and I just, I need some help. So I hired a writer to help out and hopefully starting May, we can get two of these videos out a month. That's the goal, no promises, but I think we can do it. Anyway, we're keeping up the quality, but upping the quantity. And once we hit that 20,000 subscriber mark, I'm gonna come out with another Q and A and kind of fill you in on what's been going on. Cause a lot has changed, but the content is the same. Overall, nothing but good things are coming. But anyway, let's continue with the video. Now, this is the part of the video where I kind of give you like a little history statistics rundown of the city that we're about to cover. But I don't really feel like doing that today, but it's all good because I got my friend City Geek to fill in for me. So here we go. Thanks Venture Addicts for having me on. Some of the first people to settle in San Diego were the La Jolla and then later the Kumeyaay people around the year 1000. The Kumeyaay village of Cosa I is what the settlement of San Diego would later stem from in today's Old Town. An interesting fact about San Diego is that it was the first site visited and settled by Europeans on the entire west coast of the United States. In 1542, San Rodriguez Cabrillo landed in San Diego and claimed the area for Spain. Centuries later, in 1821, it became part of the Mexican Empire and then part of the United States just 27 years after that. The city's growth really exploded during the Second World War due to San Diego being a military and defense hub. Between the years of 1930 and 1950, the population of the city doubled, exceeding 330,000. Today, San Diego has a population of over 1.4 million people, making it the eighth largest city by population in the United States and second largest city in California. San Diego has a metro population just shy of 3.3 million and makes up part of the second largest trans-border metro area in the entire Western Hemisphere, as it and Tijuana, Mexico Mexico's combined metro areas are home to about 5 million people. One reason so many people choose to call the area home may be in part because of the weather. With an average temperature between 55 to 75 degrees and no significant rain or snow, San Diego, or as it's nicknamed America's finest city, may in fact have the finest climate of any major city in the country. Special thanks to City Geek for making my job easier. Make sure to check them out to help plan your trip. Link down below. All right, let's get into it. Let's start the tourist section of the video just a couple miles down the road from the airport. This bustling market in an old Navy building has hip eateries, bars, and specialty food and craft vendors. Liberty Public Market. The market first opened in 2016 as San Diego's first seven day a week public market located in Point Loma's historic Liberty Station. They got everything from empanadas to bao buns and lobster rolls to crepes. If you enjoy outdoor seating, tasty libations, and food from all over the world, then Liberty Market is undoubtedly the best place to start your trip. Next up, this hilly neighborhood is where visitors and locals will find plenty of Italian restaurants, bakeries, and bars at the United States' largest Little Italy. San Diego's Little Italy is perfect for any time of day, whether it's a stop by Cafe Italia for coffee and snacks or treating yourself at Civico 1845 for a ritzy Italian dinner. There's even a farmer's market filling six city blocks every Saturday from 8 to 2 and every Wednesday from 9.30 to 1.30. If this is your first time on the West Coast, then I have the perfect place for you. If you want to catch a California sunset, then I think it goes without saying that the Sunset Cliffs are an ideal spot to watch. The 68-acre park stretches along the Pacific Ocean, including intricately carved coastal bluffs, arches, and sea caves. Tourists and locals alike flock to the cliff's edge every evening to catch a glimpse of this top attraction. And save yourself the headache by showing up an hour early to claim your spot. This national memorial stands tall above La Jolla and the entire San Diego region. 
Honoring a myriad of veterans and heroes, Mount Soledad National Veterans Memorial. The lookout point atop Mount Soledad offers fantastic 360-degree panoramic views. Black granite plaques include a picture of veterans with a brief summary of their military experience. And I can't forget to mention the centerpiece cross towering 29 feet tall over the city. Don't forget to check out the description down below for helpful links and other information. My last tourist recommendation is an obvious one. This seaside neighborhood promises a sun-kissed Southern California experience like no other, La Jolla. You could stop by the La Jolla Cove and take a stroll along the coast for some breathtaking views, or run a surfboard from everyday California and learn to surf at La Jolla Shores, or come by Sunday for the open air farmer's market that runs from nine to one all year. La Jolla as a whole is full of endless sights and you can easily spend your whole vacation just within the village. Before we move on, let's get an actual San Diego local to get some of their recommendations. Today, I have Near It from at San Diego Eats. So let's see what they have to suggest. Hey, Near It, how's it going today? Hi, uh, good, how are you? Good, good. So we are in the tourist section of the video and we need one really good recommendation in San Diego. Do you have anything for us today? Sure, so besides the beautiful beaches here, the one spot I would say every tourist needs to go to is Balboa Park. It's a great place for families. It's a great place for individual visitors. It's a great date place. They have so many things to offer. They have the Japanese Friendship Garden, which is just a really beautiful, serene spot. They also have a botanical garden that has all these amazing plants and right outside of it is a gorgeous pond. And then they also have a ton of different museum options from the Air and Space Museum, the Museum of Man, the Women's Museum. And there's always a lot of local food, local vendors, local performing artists. It's always a really happening spot and just a really great place to go, whether you're a local, a tourist, um, anyone who's swinging by San Diego needs to go to Belleville Park. All right, well, I think that's a perfect suggestion and thanks for having us today. Don't forget to follow at San Diego Eats to plan your trip. Links down below. Moving on to the nature and recreational section of the video, I have a historic landmark and park run by the National Park Service, Cabrillo National Monument. Heading down the peninsula, you'll drive through Fort Rosecrans National Cemetery, a grassy expanse full of tens of thousands of gravestones. Once parked, head over to the Juan Rodriguez Cabrillo statue, standing 14 feet tall, paired with an incredible view. Lastly, head even further down to the Point Loma Tide Pools. Hike around the cliffs and check out the tide pools, which stand out most during the fall and winter months. Fair warning though, the cell service is like hella spotty throughout the park. Next, just 20 minutes east of town lies countless miles of beautiful hiking trails, rugged canyons, and wildlife at Mission Trails Regional Park. The 7,000 acre open space preserve has trails for everyone. From the Visitor Center Loop Trail, a 1.5 mile loop with barely any elevation gain, or step it up with the Cowles Mountain Trail, offering three miles out and back in almost a thousand foot incline. Just remember that parking can be rough, so plan accordingly. 30 miles northeast of San Diego is perhaps one of the most popular hikes in the whole country. It may be challenging, but the end result is always worth it. Potato Chip Rock. 7.3 miles, 2,000 feet in elevation gain. Yeah, you can't take grandpa with you for this one, but he should stay away from potato chips anyway. Despite the strenuous trek and crowds of people, you'll be rewarded with the iconic thin rock at the peak. You'll most likely have to wait your turn for a photo op, but it's worth the flex. Quick editor's note, there's actually two ways up. The completely paved 4.1 mile out and back trail with about 1200 feet in elevation gain via Highway 67, or the more challenging 7.3 mile out and back trail with around 2100 feet in elevation gain via the Mount Woodson Trail. Looking for something a little less known than La Jolla? Just a few miles up the shore, you'll find an alluring beach below the cliffs, ideal for walking, hanging, and surfing, Black's Beach. Find a parking spot on a street in this neighborhood and make your way down the steep Black Beach trailhead. Black's is famous among surfers for big winter swells. However, it's better known to the rest of the world as San Diego's Nude Beach, where you'll find nudists literally hanging out north of the Glider Port Trail. Forgot your board and birthday suit? On the beach, head just half a mile down south from the trailhead until you hit the Mushroom Beach House, an abandoned guest house with a unique style. It's nothing worth more than a quick stop by, but it's cool nonetheless. Lastly, just 30 minutes north of the city, I have a short hike with a lot to see. If you like sandstone and slot canyons, then you'll love Annie's Canyon Trail. Again, 
park on a street in a neighborhood, and make your way east down the Annie's Canyon Trail. On the way to the canyon, you'll get beautiful views of the San Alijo Lagoon Ecological Reserve, and just half a mile in, you'll find yourself heading up the canyon, complete with narrow walls and ladders. Overall, the loop is just 1.5 miles in length and just 200 feet in elevation gain. Simple enough for just about anyone. Usually when we transition from nature to restaurants, I have a mid-roll to, you know, make money off of. But I'm currently in the works finding a new sponsor, so for now, I'm gonna sponsor myself. Look at this, do you see that? Is it, is it, is it focused? 2.4 of y'all, y'all watching me, y'all are not subscribed, unnecessary, unacceptable. If you think you're subscribed, check down below right now. If you're not, hit that button, come on, what are you doing? Or maybe you're looking just at everyone San Diego's videos. You're looking at all my competitors and stuff. You know what? Just stop. I'm your guy. I've covered every city, except not really. But if you want me to, also comment down that below. I'm on a life's mission here. We're going to cover every city in the entire world, entire planet. We're going to colonize Mars. I'm going to cover those cities too, okay? Just subscribe, please. Thank you. Let's move on. Now that we're in the restaurant section of the video, before I just start spitting out all my spots, I'm going to take a moment to talk about the Mexican food scene as a whole here in San Diego. Bordering Mexico, it's no surprise that this city hosts an array of street food spots, restaurants, and bakeries that bring the flavors of Baja California to the city. The California burrito was created in San Diego and is arguably the city's most well-known dish. While everyone has their favorite taco spot, there's some local standout spots I want you to know about. Let's start with the good stuff, something inexpensive and authentic. Two miles from downtown, this no-frills, cash-only taqueria has some of the best tacos, burritos, and tamales you'll ever have. Las Cuatro Milpas. Open from Monday through Saturday, this gem should be a top priority for breakfast or lunch. Although there's lines at times, it moves relatively quickly. Now, if you're looking for something more hip and contemporary, this next spot stands out for its Chicano-inspired food and decor. Salud Tacos. Go for their elevated tacos and burritos and get crazy with their refreshing alcohol beverages like margaritas, pina coladas, and horchatas. In town on Tuesday? Definitely come by for Taco Tuesday for a sweet deal. And lastly for Mexican food, another modernized joint I enjoy can be found right off the ocean in Pacific Beach, Oscar's Mexican Seafood. The creative and mind-blowingly fresh seafood at Oscars are the main draw for most people. Personally, I highly recommend the smoked fish taco and your choice of ceviche. You can dine in or get it to go and head to the beach adjacent to the restaurant. Moving on to the main list, I have food from Georgia, and no, not the US state. This little Eastern European restaurant goes by the name of Pomegranate. Borscht, Stroganoff, Kashapuri. I may not know how to pronounce half of the stuff they offer, but I sure as hell can eat it. The inside is cozy with a heavy Russian aesthetic. Grab some steamy cabbage rolls and wash it all down with the Baltica lager. This place is so authentic, you may even forget that you're still in San Diego. Ramen is undoubtedly my go-to dish when traveling, unless I'm like in North Dakota or something. Anyway, I try my hardest not to recommend a spot in every video. However, San Diego is home to a personal all-time favorite, Nazaru Ramen Bar. There's Japanese classics such as sushi rolls, starters like chicken karage, and even weird stuff like a ramen burrito. But if you know me, which you don't, you'd know that I'm here to recommend pork ramen. There's a few bowls to choose from, but go with the Donkey Kong or the Spicy Heights and don't look back. FYI, if you're coming here for lunch, it's only available on weekends. San Diego's Cider Pioneer can be found in North Park. Heavily inspired by the great outdoors, the interior of this restaurant is an ode to their passion for adventure. Bivouac Ciders Besides their own brews, Bivouac also serves other ciders from across the world, plus craft beers and wine. And while that may be all that people need to hear to visit, the food here makes it even better. Their menu is limited to a short list of shareables and handheld entrees that reach a quality that anyone can enjoy. And don't forget to grab some cider to go. With multiple outposts throughout San Diego, the South Park location of this friendly, family-owned Italian restaurant remains the most beloved. Bona Forchetta. Each pizza is baked in a golden handmade oven by the name of Sofia, cooking up pies like the Nicola pizza, which has mozzarella, mushrooms, prosciutto di parma, and truffle oil. Or get something for yourself like an appetizer, salad, pasta, or I'm sorry, what is this? Pizza in a glass. <laughs> I can't tell if this is genius or a post begging to be on the We Want Plates subreddit. Oh, yep, 
There it is. Anyway, think there's Italian in the city better than Bona Forchetta? Let me know down in the comments below. You'd think that maybe you'd have a decent chance of finding better Italian in Little Italy itself. And that's where you'll find my last restaurant suggestion. This may not actually be an Italian restaurant, but it's definitely a must try here in San Diego. Juniper and Ivy. This swanky new American eatery is only open for dinner and makes for a great date night spot. Small plates, overpriced libations, everything you need to treat yourself to a well-deserved outing. All jokes aside, every menu item is outstanding. But if I had to choose one dish, it would have to be the carne cruda asada toast with beef tartare, spiced crema, katia, green onion, and egg yolk jam. Definitely check the reservations before planning your visit. For coffee, this local roastery hosts five locations around town serving classic and specialty coffee drinks, as well as scratch-made vegan donuts, Dark Horse Coffee Roasters. The shop is welcoming and great for grabbing a brew and chilling or grabbing a quick order to go. In 2018, they launched their first ice cream shop, Mutual Friend Ice Cream. Head to the new South Park location if you want to grab both coffee and ice cream. Next for dessert, even though I just mentioned one, I have another ice cream recommendation that's even better than Mutual Friends. With two locations around town, this black-owned gourmet ice cream shop serves Hawaiian-made ice cream and sorbet. Hammonds. They offer over 300 flavors of supreme ice cream, handmade with 18% butterfat, adding a rich and creamy texture you can taste. Speaking of Hawaiian, have you ever tasted chocolate coconut macadamia nut ice cream, Le Lacoy Sorbet, or even a peanut butter and guava jelly flavor? Cause they got it. The dense, creamy, and delicious flavors will make your taste buds stand up and shout for more. Now that wraps it up for my list, but let's bring on Near It one more time from at San Diego Eats and get some of their recommendations for food. All right, Nir, just had to have you back on one more time. We are in the restaurant section of the video, and I know you got those good food suggestions. So what can you recommend for us today? So if you're looking for a spot that's quintessential San Diego with an ocean view, I highly recommend Cody's. They're a breakfast, brunch, and lunch spot located in La Jolla. They're on the second story, and you can see the water from any table that you sit in. They have amazing cocktails, French toast, from espresso martinis to the eggs benedict to all of their awesome food options. They also have an amazing lobster roll that you can't miss out on. It's just a really great place to go, whether you're going with your family or with friends or for a quick breakfast or you want to stop in for a fancier brunch. It's a really great option. And now that we're in La Jolla, there's also another spot right around the corner. It's about two blocks away called Puesto. Puesto is a famous San Diego spot serving gourmet tacos. And there's everything from octopus tacos to specialty vegetarian and vegan tacos to meat tacos and of course you have to get their margaritas if you aren't in La Jolla they also have locations at the headquarters in downtown and now also open in Mission Valley which is a little bit more central and if you're headed down more central there is the crack shack and fried chicken has become a really big thing but this fried chicken is incredible one of the favorite sandwiches there is the firebird it's a hot chicken sandwich that is just so good and you have to order the schmaltz fries that they're famous for but they're a favorite in little italy very casual great drinks and great food all right well thanks again for those suggestions definitely have to check that out if you're going to san diego all three spots or at least one of them so thanks again for joining us again check down below for a quick link to their instagram if I'm going to talk bars and nightlife in San Diego, then I need to start with the Gas Lamp Quarter. This is a one-stop shop where everything is within a five-minute walking distance and will surely make your night unforgettable. If you enjoy craft cocktails, fried favorites, and alcohol-infused ice cream, then stop by Metal Bar. Southern food like fried chicken sandwiches as well as other classic bar fare headlines the menu at this spot, but save room for the restaurant's small batch boozy ice cream. Or walk a block over for some more bar grub, karaoke, and classic cocktails at Werewolf, a local favorite that also has a killer brunch daily starting at 8 a.m. Pro tip, just get blackout drunk and spend a night there and you'll already have a spot for brunch. Kidding, please don't do that. If you want craft beer, tons of outdoor space, and SoCal vibes, then head towards East Village to the Amplified Ale Works Kitchen and Beer Garden. There's tons of seating as well as a spacious outdoor patio that opens to the greenery of Fault Line Park. There's great brews on a rotating tap that you don't want to miss out on, like the Electrocution, their flagship IPA, or Get Weird with the Smokin' Kiwi, a smoked beer made with fruity New Zealand hops. Not sure what makes it stand out, but it's hella good. I'm saying hella too much. I'm sorry. I don't I don't know I don't know where that came from. 
As a longtime champion of the natural wine scene in San Diego, this is the best place in town to taste and buy local wine. The Rose Wine Bar. Besides offering a variety of wine and a welcoming atmosphere, people can't help but rave of Rose's empanadas and other snacks. Open from lunch to the late of night, the Rose is perfect for sipping on wine during the day or switching to the hard stuff with some homemade cocktails at night. Don't forget to stop by their other company next door, Secret Sister, during the day for some baked goods too. Open from 8 to 3, 5 days a week. Let's get back to the real late night 2 a.m. spots. This apothecary-esque bar offers craft cocktails and microbrews in a stylish retro space with an atrium. Polite provisions. If you want a cool vibe and some potent ass drinks, then this is your spot. Go with something refreshing like the Kentucky Buck with bourbon, lemon, strawberry, ginger beer, and bitters. Or my favorite, the Huma Huma Nuka Nuka Hoopa. Look, I don't know how to pronounce that word. No one does. Well, except that one guy from Forgetting Sarah Marshall. Huma Huma Nuka Nuka Apua Ah. Yeah, bitch. Anyway, it has gin, pineapple, rajat, lemon, and bitters. Definitely come by for happy hour on the weekdays after work hours for a sweet deal. And lastly, I have a similar spot. With a bit more funk and live music in a retro 70s style space open daily from 5 p.m. to 2 a.m. Sycamore Den. This modern take on a 1970s middle-class family living room is complete with a functioning fireplace and non-functioning wall-hung shotguns. With a classic cocktail menu featuring drinks favored by the typical 1970s dad and 24 beers on tap, you couldn't feel more at home than at Sycamore Den. So there you have it. Visiting California, you can go get your car broken into in San Francisco, sit in traffic for an hour to travel a mile up the road in Los Angeles, or you can go to the faultless sunny San Diego and have the perfect trip. Just kidding. I love San Fran and LA, but you have to admit that San Diego is a way more relaxed California city to visit. I make surveys here on YouTube to let you the people pick the next city. So subscribe and keep an eye out for the next one. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like this video and comment down below which city we should cover next.